Hi, welcome to the motion tracking segment of the After Effects basic training series. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at motion tracking, but more importantly, we're gonna learn what motion tracking is. So, to get started, I have some footage of Los Angeles. And I'm gonna take it and drag it into the make new comp button, let it go, and a new composition is then created with all the same settings as my footage. Now, this shot is a little bit shaky. So what I wanna do is stabilize it. But I don't wanna stabilize the whole shot just from about here to about here. So what I'm gonna do is set my current time indicator about here, hit the letter B as in boy, and that brings the beginning of my work area to that point. I can also trim it by just dragging it. Then I'm gonna to move to about four seconds and hit the letter N. I can also drag the end of the work area as needed. Then I'm going to right click on this bar and choose trim comp to work area. And that will trim the composition to just that area of the clip. Now let's go ahead and get started motion tracking. So as you can see, this shot is a little bit shaky. So what we can do with motion tracking is get rid of that slight shake. And to do that, we can double click on our footage. And what that does is brings it up in a viewer. Now the composition looks like this and the viewer looks like this. Now when you motion track, you motion track in the viewer, not in the composition view. So if you want to motion track, you need to double click on your footage. So now that we have it up in the viewer, I'm going to choose Window Tracker Controls. And here is the motion tracking controls. What we can do is stabilize motion or track motion. Now these two methods track the footage the same way but the difference is how the data is used in the final video. Let's go ahead and start tracking this shot. So what we're gonna do is stabilize the motion of this shot. So I'm gonna click on Stabilize Motion. And what this does is creates a brand new track point. And what we can do with the track point is click on the inner square and move it around. Now a track point is made up of a few things. The inner square is the track area, which means what to search for from frame to frame. Now the outer area is the search area. So if you have a shaky shot, you want the search area to be large enough so that from one frame to the next, your track area can be found. Now, if you make the search area too large, motion tracking can take a lot longer and be more inaccurate. So you wanna make it as small as possible, but be able to search enough of the area to find that track point. Now, the track point works best on a high contrast area, like this corner. And as you can see, when you move it around, it sort of zooms in so you can see a little bit closer. So we want our track area to be on a high contrast point, such as this white corner. And the reason why is tracking analyzes frames to frames. Now, if we were to put this track area on these leaves, it would have a difficult time maintaining that track area because similar areas exist around it. So it might think that this is the area that's supposed to track instead of right here. So you wanna have a distinct high contrast point such as this. Now let's find a suitable point to begin stabilizing this shot. So I'm rolling the mouse button out and what I wanna do is take my track point and drag it over here and I'm holding down the space bar to drag in my comp since I don't have a lot of room to work. Now I'm gonna move my first track point to the bottom of this gap sign. Seems like a pretty high contrast area. Then I'm gonna zoom out. Now, this shot also rotates slightly. So the tracker controls also have an option to analyze the rotation. And how this works is you create another track point. Now, how this works is each track point analyzes the tracking area that you designate. And then depending on how much this point pivots from track point number one, it creates a rotation value that is used to stabilize the footage. So what we want to do is find a track point that is kind of on the same plane as this building. So what I'm going to do is move my second track point up to the corner of one of these lights. And so now we've created this line from one point to the other. Now that we've set up our track points, we can begin to analyze the footage. And to do that, we're going to click on the Analyze Forward button. So as you can see, the data is processed and data has now been collected in the timeline. Now, we started tracking in the middle of the piece of footage. So what we need to do now is track backwards from this first point. 
And it's okay if the track overlaps, it'll just replace the track points with the new ones. So I'm gonna click on the Analyze Backwards button, and that will finish tracking the shot from start to finish. Okay, now we've tracked the data, so what can we do with it? Well, we wanna apply the data to the footage. So I'm gonna click Apply, and it's gonna ask X and Y, and we're gonna choose OK. And now back in the main composition, the viewer sort of closes out momentarily and goes back to the composition. We can now scrub through our footage, and you can see by looking right here that the footage stays perfectly stable. Now, one side effect of motion tracking is that we get these black bars on the side. And the reason for that is that because the motion tracking data followed this one point on the gap sign, it moves the layer left and right in order to maintain that point, thereby stabilizing it. However, we get some black edges depending on how much the layer has to be offset in order for it to maintain that position. So the solution there, or the simple solution, is to simply scale the footage up. So with the layer selected, I hit the letter S, bringing up our scale option, and I'm just gonna increase this to about 110. That gets rid of the black on the edge, and now we have a perfectly stable shot, and we can preview that through the time controls. Now, let's take a look at another example. What I'm gonna do is take the same Los Angeles footage, drag it into yet another composition, and we're gonna go ahead and do a sign replacement on this gap sign. So we received a letter from Gap, they're telling us to take the sign down, we're getting sued, lawyers are coming to the house, you know, throwing bricks through your window. So we wanna go ahead and take care of this gap sign. So what I wanna do first is create a new solid. And what we're gonna do is basically just black this out. So I'm gonna take this color picker, and basically we're gonna make a color solid that's the same color as this gap sign. I'm gonna choose OK. And so now we've created our layer. I'm gonna just shut it off for a second. And what we wanna do is double click on our Los Angeles movie, bring it up in the viewer, so we can begin tracking it. So I'm gonna double click. Here's our viewer. And remember, we're working in a brand new composition. And in this case, we're gonna track motion, not stabilize. So I'm gonna choose track motion. And for this, we're gonna choose the track type perspective corner pin. And what this does is brings up four track points that are all kind of hooked together. And then what I'm gonna do is line each of these track points up with this gap sign. So I'm gonna drag this one and line it up with the bottom corner. I'm gonna drag this one, line it up with this bottom corner. That one and that one. Now, one of the cool things about motion tracking is you do not have to track the point you're looking to calculate. For example, this track point number four is gonna track this point right here, right in the middle of the track area. And as you can see, it's gonna create the coordinate of about 600 by 400 if you look into my info palette here. Now, that's all fine, but what if this point was all black or somehow obscured, but just next to it was another point we could track? Well, in this case, we have this cross into the structure of the building. And what I can do is drag the track area to this cross, but the important thing is that our track point needs to be lined up with the gap sign. So what I can do is drag the point, and you can see the mouse sort of changes into this point grabber, and I'm gonna move it right over here. So our tracking is gonna happen here, but the position data is gonna be applied here. So it sort of offsets it automatically. Now, you wanna be careful because if this was say on the other side of the building here, the tracking data wouldn't be perfect. So make sure it's on the same plane that you're trying to track. And also be aware that if we move the track point, it moves relative as well. Okay, so now that our points are set up, I'm gonna to begin to track the footage. So I'm gonna click on the Analyze Forward button. And now you can see all four points have been tracked simultaneously. Now the difference here is we don't wanna apply this tracking data to our Los Angeles footage, but instead apply it to our dark lime green solid. So I'm gonna click Edit Target and make sure that that layer is selected. And then I'm gonna choose OK, and then we click Apply. And then it takes us back to our composition and a bunch of tracking data and a corner pin effect has been applied to our dark lime green solid. Now, what we need to do is turn this layer back on and you can see 
the lime green solid is now covering over the gap sign. And if I scrub through this, you can see that the sign is covered up by this dark lime green solid. Now we could add our own sign, but it might be a little tricky, but let's give it a shot. I'm gonna select the layer, choose layer, pre-compose. Now, for this type of shot, we wanna leave all attributes in this comp, meaning this corner pin effect must remain in this comp. And then I'm gonna choose OK. So now, nothing's really changed, everything is the same, except now we can Alt double click on this dark lime green composition now that it's a comp and reveal the layers inside. Now, the layer is back to its original size and inside of this comp, it's basically squished down using the corner pin effect. Now, if I go back to our pre-comp, I could add text to this layer. So I'll take the text tool, click in the composition and type VCP. And then I'll take the arrow tool and we'll scale this up. And we wanna scale it up to really stretch this particular document, just about like that. So now when I go back into my LA comp, you can see our VCP logo is on the wall and it's looking good. Now, we can also go back in here and scale this down as needed to make it look proper in here. We can also use an image to replace the sign as well. Now, back to the comp, as a final touch, you might add a slight fast blur to your text since video is usually a little bit softer than graphics. So I'll select the comp, choose effect, blur, fast blur, and we'll set it to maybe one or two, maybe 0.5. So that way it just looks a little bit more realistic. We can even add a glow, effect, stylize, glow, and turn the glow intensity down to 0.5. So there you go, video co-pilot right on Hollywood Boulevard in LA. Now if I go back to my project window, I have a shot of Sam and Tino, and what I'm gonna do is take this footage, drag it into the Make New Comp button, it's gonna create a new composition, and then I'm gonna double click on the footage in the composition, and this is gonna allow me to motion track it. And what I wanna do is motion track his ear. So I'm gonna click on track motion. Our tracker point pops up and I wanna position this right on his ear. And then I'm gonna click analyze forward. That's pretty good. So now I've tracked his ear. So what can I do with that? Well, let's take a look. First, this data is raw tracking data we want to apply it to what's called a null object. Now, if I go back to my composition for a second, I can create that null object. So if I choose layer, new, null object. Now, a null object just looks like this. It doesn't render, it's just a viewport helper. And it's also a layer that allows you to store information that you can use for other things. So if I go back to my Sam and Tino track layer, I can click edit target, and choose that null object as the receiver for this tracking information. Then I choose OK and click Apply. X and Y, OK. OK, now we're back in the composition and now this null object has the tracking data applied to it. And so if I scrub through the video, you can see that null object is basically stuck to his ear. But the null object doesn't actually render, it's just there to help us. So what could we use the null object for? Well, what I'm going to do is create a new white solid. Choose OK, make it comp size OK. Then I'm going to take the pen tool. And what I'm going to do is just create sort of a thinking box. And we can also click away and then click back on the mask and adjust the points if it's not perfect because this is not perfect. And we can also click on the points and use the up and down arrow keys to move them. And I'm just clicking on one point, holding down shift and clicking on another point. And that way I can just kind of move the points and get the shape I want. And then I'm gonna take this thinking box and just kind of move it near his head. And now I'm gonna take the text tool 
and just click inside of this box and we're gonna type, I'm lost or something funny. Um, you know, it's up to you. And now that we've created our thinking box, what I can do is take these two layers, hold down shift and select both of the layers. Then take the parenting pick whip and drag it to the null object. And now if I watch this, you can see that layer is now connected to that track point because this null object follows that distinct point. Now we can shut the null object off. We don't really need to see it. And at any time we can adjust these layers and reposition it as we need. Maybe we can move this point down and move this up above him and it will still follow along because it's linked to this null object. And that's the great thing about parenting. Now we can also take this white solid and this is the button to show or hide masks. We can shut them off since we want to kind of see what we're looking at. And I can choose effect, perspective, drop shadow. And then I can just kind of create a little shadow for uh, our thought box here. So this among other things are great ways to use tracking data. Now one other way we could use tracking data, I'm going to create a new black solid. And then I'm going to choose OK. And then I'm going to choose Effect, Generate, uh, Lens Flare, our favorite lens flare. So here's a great lens flare. And what I'm going to do is hit F4. And I'm going to change the transfer mode to Screen. So now we have our lens flare here. And I'm going to go ahead and just shut off these two layers for a second. And now what if we want the lens flare center point. So see how we can move the center point here? What if I want the lens flare to follow that point? So say instead of tracking his ear, we tracked, you know, a light or something like that, we want to have a lens flare connected to it. Well, the way to do it is select the null object and hit the letter P. And that brings up the position. Then select this layer, bring down the effects, bring up the lens flare, and now we have our flare center. Now, the easiest way to do this is to alt click on the stopwatch for the flare center. That brings up all this crazy stuff, but don't worry, just take this pick whip and link it to the position of the null object. And what that is going to do is always make sure that this data is the same as this null object. So watch this. Now, I don't know why you'd want someone's head to be glowing, but uh, if you did, then this tutorial is right up your alley. <laughs> but in this case, you know, you can see the idea. Now, if for some reason you don't want to use this pick whip expression, you can alt click on the stopwatch and that removes it. You can also select the parameter position, choose edit copy, select the flare center. This is where we want to paste this data, choose edit paste and that actually copies the actual keyframes from this layer to this layer so you don't have to use an expression but I think expressions are useful and a lot faster well I hope you found this tutorial useful um, you know and uh, just be careful if you really have a friend out there that has a lens flare coming from his face you might want to think about who you've been hanging out with I'm Andrew Kramer and thanks for watching